Any sign of them? No, but plenty of redcoats. A few here, too. Daniel, with the price the British have on your head, you could have chosen a safer place to be. Well, I doubt if they expect me to be this far north. In any case, I didn't do the choosing. He's overdue now. How long do you plan to wait? Well, until he shows up, those are my orders. You know, Beaumarchais is quite a famous man throughout Europe, and highly respected, but... I had no idea he was so sympathetic to our cause, least of all a secret agent for the colonies. Let's hope the British have no idea either. Ben Franklin's letter said, be careful not to offend him, that he can be important to the revolution. Yes, but not a hint of why he's coming or what we have to do when he gets here. None. amounts of it. That is, if I decide to use it at all. I trust I have the honor of addressing the renowned Daniel Boone. You must be Mr. Beaumarchais? Cher. Beaumarchais. The same. We are well met. Mm, you live up to your legend, monsieur. Company, the back. You're beginning to worry about you, sir, the time running on. You are what you think of me trying to assemble a cast. Oh, of course, the, uh, the sign on the wagon that directs from Paris is a little deceit, actually. I had to pick them all up in Quebec, and Quebec is not noted for talent. You're not going to take them all along with us? And the wagon, too? My dear fellow, how else could I transport them to say nothing of the costumes and scenery? Oh, it's all right. He's with me. Is it? Am I seeing for the very first time? I am, I am one of your two savages. No, oh, may I touch him. Superb, fantastic. He has a name, I suppose. I am known as Mingo. He understands. He speaks. And with what primitive dignity. I am known as Mingo. 
<laughs> what a tragedy there are no parts for him in my plays. Oh, come, sir, with a little rehearsal and a bit of makeup, I might do very well. Say, in the role of Figaro. He knows my plays. Oh, not only knows, monsieur, but admires them. With everything else, he has taste. Children, come, you must meet these extraordinary people. We should talk, monsieur. Allez vite. One of my greatest discoveries. I look forward to a long association with this uh, disarming little creature. Mademoiselle da... Uh, oh. Brion, monsieur. <laughs> well, uh, let us simply know you, as you will soon be known by audiences the world over as the bewitching Susanna. Hmm? Enchanté, monsieur. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Excuse me, sir, but can we talk? This fellow will be a suitor, the Count Helmivira, dashing, formidable, a model to all lovers. We, uh, we really must do something about the characterization of yours. However, no doubt time will tell. If you say so, monsieur. Figaro and my Bartolo. Can we talk? But I haven't said a word. Children, proceed, I'm sure we are all famished. Exactly what do they know? About you? Nothing. Only that we were to meet a guide. I am no novice at this business, Monsieur Boone. You may have noticed that I did not mention your name in their hearing. Well, how much do they know about your real reason for being here? When I hired them, I told them simply, perhaps a little slyly, uh, that, that, that there was a secondary reason for my trip. But not one of them showed even the slightest curiosity about the reason. And uh, that satisfied them? Totally. I assure you, whatever occurs, actors the world over are interested in only three things. Themselves, their performances, and themselves again. I hope so. But at any rate, it's a little late to change things now. Now, we'd better start moving with British troops in the area. We're liable to run into some trouble. Not with me here and this shrewd and enchanting facade. Mr. Beaumarchais, I understood this to be a secret mission. But of course. Of course. I also understood that you were to explain the details to me. Very well. I am to go to Norfolk, Virginia. You are to take me there. Voilà. But, monsieur, I still don't understand all this. A way of getting around the British and an essential part of our enterprise, transport. Of what? Excuse me. If you please. The costumes. Remove them, if you please. False bottom? Exactly. Take it out. Precisely. It is a handsome little package we shall deliver to Virginia. What's the gold for? To buy muskets, powder, cannon. There is a ship in harbor loaded with weapons. If we do not reach Norfolk within a week, she will set sail for other shores with her precious cargo. So haste must be our watchword. Well, I agree with you on that. Wouldn't we make far better time on horseback? We could load the gold in saddlebags and uh, make a run for it. Not in my opinion. Too heavy for the horses. Monsieur Beaumarchais, about the cast. They will save us from the British. Fear not, gentlemen. I am an expert at tricking the enemy. Well, in any case, I'm under orders to accommodate you. There's no point in arguing with you about that. Indeed.
I will not guide you, and you will not tell me how to run my affairs. Hmm? Mr. Beaumarchais. Monsieur Boom, you and I come from different cultures. Quite obviously, we are most uh, dissimilar men, but we do share a love of freedom and an admiration for this young and struggling country. Then let us make the least of our differences. And the most of our mutual passion for liberty. Hmm? Mr. Beaumarchais, we agree again. Now, let us see what little surprises we have here. Ha ha, pate de foie gras, haricot vert, and uh, a little canard beau marché. Monsieur, and your wine. Imbecile! You have poured Chateau Ikem. Chateau Ikem with canard. Ah, a child would have known better. Pardon, gentlemen, these stupidities must be as taxing to you as they are to me. With the infinite pains, I transported these wines from France myself. I watched over the casks like a mother over her children. With the infinite care, I saw that the sun and spray kept from them, that they were not jostled. And for what? So that that fool might serve Chateau Ikem with canard. Monsieur. <laughs> Figaro! This is going to be some trip. Hmm. Can I bon marché? No, thank you. Susanna. What conceit? Oh, but you must realize I have a thousand important things to tell you. No, 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 no. Where is your use, your fire? You think you are paying back to know the old man here? I show you how to woo this lovely child. Susanna! Oh, 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 oh. oh thank you, oh, thank you. Oh. Monsieur Mingo. Is it absolutely necessary to travel as if we were being pursued by all the hounds of Hades? One can never tell in this country, Monsieur Beaumarchais. We might very well be. There might even be Indians. <laughs> Let us proceed as best we can. A company of players, are we not? We all wish to improve our arts, is that not so? Well, circumstances have provided us with an opportunity. We are about to receive visitors. Visitors before whom you will give a performance. As your director, I charge you 
to project a bland ignorance of anything or anyone except our obvious mission of bringing culture to the wilderness. What is it, sir? Are you Mr. Beaumarchais? You have that honor. I'm obliged to detain and search all vehicles in this area. A state of war exists between His Majesty's government and these colonies. I am fully aware of the state of war. But are you aware, sir, that I am a neutral a Frenchman, an artist, a conductor, and a close friend of His Gracious Majesty, Louis XVI? Nonetheless, I have my orders. As you see, we are a company of actors and singers bringing culture to this primitive country. We are not your colonies. I must still ask you to allow my men to go over your wagon. I will allow, but I will resent. And I want to meet your associates, all of them. Children, come and meet this British officer. My, uh, driver, as you see, an Indian. My leading lady. Bonjour. Susanna. My Figaro. Monsieur. Alma Viva. And my Bartolo. Yes, all of him. Ah. Rifles for our little opera, and please be careful, they cannot be replaced. Major, this crate is ruddy heavy for draperies. Uh, uh, lead weights, uh, uh, bullies for the scenery and draperies. You have the word of a French gentleman. Open it. Red white, sir. I, uh, I will accept your apology, Major. Mr. Beaumarchais, I do not apologize for doing my duty. And the Indian, where did you get him? In Canada. You will be surprised, Major, in France, how we admire the noble redskin. Him good, me. Mm. Him feed engine good. Mm. All right, mount up. Uh, uh, Major, instruct your men to put the case back where they found it. Please? Put it back. that if it had not been for the facade of my opera company, the visit of the British major might have ended in disaster for our cause. Well, Mr. Beaumarchais, it would if you'd have searched a few more boxes. If, Monsieur Boone, you are too cautious for a secret agent, you need the soul of an adventurer, a taste for danger, if you're to succeed in the business of intrigue. 
the same, I think I'll have a look around. Non più andrai farfalone amorozzo, notte e giorno d'intorno girando, delle belle turbando il reposo, narciseto ad un cino d'amor, delle belle turbando il reposo, narciseto ad un cino d'amor. Bravo! Magnificent voice. <laughs> Do you not agree, Susanna? Oh, I agree, I agree. Well, with a little rehearsal, he could play my part. Oh, yes, but um, to play Figaro, he must be uh, more than a singer. He must be um, a fixer, um, a scoundrel. Something like Beaumarchais, perhaps, huh? Yes. Beaumarchais is all that. And charming and talented. Which I am not. I'll tell you what you are. You are tiresome. But you, you are a flirt. Bonne nuit. Let go. Stop teasing me. Let me go. Let me go. No. Are you such a fool that you must force yourself when you are not wanted? She doesn't mean it. She's being flirtatious like all women. Oh. How would you know? Well, how would you remember? He has wit, but he has no grace. Come, my dear. Viva didn't leave empty-handed. Must have stolen off during the night. There's no point in going after him now. Not only a bad actor, but a common thief. Maybe not so common and maybe not such a bad actor. He could easily have carried more than one. 
But if I don't follow you, gentlemen... That gold, Monsieur Beaumarchais, is evidence that this is not just a traveling company of actors. You mean he's a British spy? Oh, I doubt that, but he may think he has valuable information to sell to the British. We're close enough to the garrison at Slater's Fort to use their help, Mingo. You knew the way. Get what help you can and meet us later. From now on, we'll take the mountain trail. The mountain trail? And this? If the British come looking for us, they won't look there. They think we'd be crazy to go that way, and they'd be right. They would indeed. And now, Mr. Beaumarchais, let's stop talking and start moving. What are you doing? Leave it. Oh, not until I've had my breakfast. Oh, I'd give my soul for a bit of parsley. Parsley? My dear Boone, I am a courtier, a musician, a publisher, a shipbuilder, a manufacturer, and a financier. But above all, I am a gourmet, a connoisseur of fine food. I eat snails. You step on them. In reality, I am a seven men. And at this moment, all seven men insist on eating their breakfast. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me, Mr. Beaumarchais, that you're eight men. Oh? On top of all the rest, I figure you're a patriot. And we need the help of that man, the patriot. Monsieur Boone, you are a diplomat. Merci. And now, don't you think you should tell your cast what's in the wind? You'd have me do that on an empty stomach? Impossible. Susanna Figaro Bartolo! Petit déjeuner, breakfast is served. Merci, mes enfants. We will not wait for Almeida. He is gone for good or for bad. Monsieur? Later, my child, later. Children, until now, we have been merely a troupe of players rehearsing a fiction. Now it is possible that we shall soon be facing a challenge which comes to few. I appeal to you, uh, not as actors, but as human beings. I call upon your noblest instincts to protect this mission of ours against those who would crush the flickering flame of freedom which has been ignited in this young nation. Since we will require your help, your bravery, and your belief in the brotherhood of man, we have decided to make you partners in this exciting enterprise. <laughs> And do you always carry a gold ingot when you travel in the wilderness? But, Colonel, that is my proof of what I tell you. A troupe of traveling players and singers from France transporting contraband for the colonial. Yes, gold bars under the costumes. I saw them with my own eyes. There must be dozens. Of course. And you were running in your eagerness to reach us and tell us about it. Yes, exactly. That's why you were running in the wrong direction? No, no, I became confused. You say you're an actor? Yes. Better find a new trade. Not oh, just a minute. You're not even a good liar. Oh, Colonel, if you will simply stop the wagon and have it searched. I must say, I do admire your gall. Do you colonials really imagine I'm so stupid as to fall for such an obvious trap? I have told you, I am a Canadian, not I a I have a small force here. I ride out on this expedition, leave this place unprotected. <laughs> not even a good try. And as for that, that is now confiscated. His Majesty's property, the fortunes of war, put him in irons. Colonel, you are a fool. That fellow Boone will have to go to its destination before you wake Wait. up. Boone? Daniel Boone? Well, I, I do not know the man's first name. Describe him. He's uh, tall, very tall. Coonskin cap, buckskins. 
You know there is a jail sentence for giving false information to His Majesty's army. Yes, I know, Colonel. And if you're a spy, the penalty is the firing squad. Very well. Show me on this map where the wagon is. off the road to get ahead of Colonel Joshua Winthrop of His Majesty's First Grenadiers. Enchanté. I am Pierre Augustin, Caron de Beaumarchais. Search the wagon. Where is Daniel Boone? I hear. Pardon? Daniel Boone. There is no one of that name in this cast. That man says that Daniel Boone is traveling with you. Oh, he is a cretin, a liar. Did he tell you that I had fired him? You did not. I quit. I protest. Once before, I have been subjected to this indignity, this inconvenience at the hands of you British. You will not find your man in that box. We are looking for something else, Mr. Beaumarchais. What? Gold. Gold bars, contraband. Ha, 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 gold. Marvelous. Would I be wandering through the wilderness with gold? Would I have left the Grand Boulevard of Paris if I had gold? Perhaps she is your Daniela Bond. Daniel Boone. Uh, uh, oh, my Figaro. Perhaps he is your uh, Daniel Le Bon. Let me see your hands. Where is Daniel Boone? Uh, I do not know the Daniel Boone. And you? No, monsieur, no. Did you find the gold? No. No, it is gone. Which one of this group did you think was Boone? Well, he's not here now, but he was. He and that Indian. All right, where's the Indian? I, I do not know. There seems to be a great deal you do not know. So, Daniel Boone has vanished. 
His Indian has vanished, and the gold has vanished. Well, it, it was there. Or perhaps they have hidden it someplace, huh? Sergeant, place this man under arrest. Colonel Lee, it is regrettable that we have suffered such inconvenience at the hands of that boar. You let us share the bouquet of my native hills and part as friends. Ah, your, your soldiers have been very solemn, Colonel. <laughs> I trust nothing is broken in here. Ah, if you will do me the honor. My own cuvier transported all the way from Burgundy. Ah. Your health. Mmm, <coughs> delicious, Mr. Beaumarchais. Incredible. Now, you maintain you are simply a troop of traveling players. Precisely. With no interest in the rebellion and no sympathy for either side. No culture, the arts never take sides. Quite. However, I'm afraid I shall have to detain you. I'm going to send a courier to General Gates and let him decide what disposition to make of the matter. But we have a performance scheduled in Portsmouth. Regrettable. Only another hour of daylight. We'll make camp here and await the General's reply. How long will that take? To the General's headquarters and return. Ten, twelve hours? This is outrageous. War is outrageous, Mr. Beaumarchais. Yes. Isn't it, Colonel? What is this delicious meat, Commandant? Cow. A cow. I would have guessed mule. At least it's good red meat. It doesn't need the sauces and spices you French pour over everything. Ah, but that's a matter of taste, Commandant. And you may be right. Uh, taste is a matter of geography. <laughs> Sergeant Gresham, Mr. Kegel, Daniel Boone. The garrison at Slater's Fort has been called out to assist General Combs at Tucker's Hill. The skeleton force could only spare these gentlemen. Well, the gold's right down to their noses, only they don't know it. You mean they haven't found it? They haven't found it. But how many of you ever saw it? Maviva saw where it was, not where it is. I found a new hiding place. We're too few for a frontal attack. What we need is a performance. More tea? Mm? Tea. Oh, thank you. Monsieur Beaumarchais. The, the nose, it meets with your approval, monsieur. The, the nose? Oui, oui, monsieur, for the dress rehearsal. But I just told... Uh, you yourself said, monsieur Beaumarchais, it is our responsibility to bring culture to the wilderness. I still don't understand. In the cause of liberté, Fraternité and 
Égalité, monsieur. Oh, des dresseries, Bartolo! Forgive me, I was distracted. Oh, I do admire your devotion to your art. I do, I do. I'll change my clothes immediately. If my host will forgive me. My players are desperately in need of work. Since we are detained here, we may as well use the time to good advantage. Actors. Gentlemen, your attention. Our play is about to begin. The scene is the castle of the Count and Countess Alma Viva. Figaro, the barber, has just been awarded the post of Major Domo by the Count in recognition of his past services. As our scene opens, our hero is discovered with Susanna, the Countess's lady in waiting, to whom he is betrothed. His song is on a subject which should be very close to the hearts of all of you, the rigors of war. immediately. You've already seen him. Now get back inside. I must speak to him now or it will be too late. What for? The spies, they are here.
sad. How sad. The performance was going so well. How much further to our destination? We should reach Norfolk by mid-morning. Monsieur Boone, uh, then it will be goodbye. Yeah. Would you indulge the sentimentality of an old man? I should so cherish a little memento of our great association. Well, Mr. Beaumarchais. Ah! <laughs> parfait! Parfait! The perfect souvenir of the frontier of liberty. Mm. Thank you, thank you, my friend. If you will permit me, accept this. Thank you. Ah, and my children, did they not rise to the occasion like true professionals? Susanna. Figaro, Bartolo, I salute you individually and collectively. In every way, you perform magnificently. Ah, and Mingo, oh, Mingo, come with me to Paris. A genuine American Indian, a true child of nature, and an opera singer as well, you would be a sensation. With me as your impresario, you'd make a fortune. Mm. Him happy here. Him eat good. Him sleep good. Mm, Injun stay here. What a pity. What a pity. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>